Good morning. Good morning on this 4th of July weekend on this holiday time in our country as we celebrate so many things and give thanks and rejoice for the gift of life as we experience it here. Thank you for pausing during all of that to find some sacred space to join in online worship, to offer prayers and join in the singing, to hear the word read and spoken. Thank you as we gather as a community of faith to lift our praises and to know anew of God's love in our lives. I've chosen as our passage for this day, the closing verses to the 11th chapter of the Matthew of Gospel, uh, Gospel of Matthew, my apologies. The last three verses are very, very familiar. They begin, however, with Jesus taking a moment in front of his disciples to thank God. Always a good thing, right? And at that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. And then Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Thanks be to God, for this is the word of God. Let us pray. On this bright and beautiful summer day, we give thanks for so many privileges, for so many freedoms, but especially for how you invite us to walk with you regardless regardless of our station regardless of how we feel regardless of our ability you choose us to walk with you and may we do so being held up being held high being given a path to follow this is our humble prayer amen so it's almost a contradiction, right? Independence weekend, and we are burdened. I know you follow the news. These are difficult and different days that are getting more difficult and different. And I'm sure, I'm absolutely positive that you found 101 different ways to cope I hope that the morning, the morning devotions and these services and all the ways in which you've grown on your own ver, uh, journey of faith uh, have given comfort and respite and provided for strength and the opportunity to breathe deeply and reflect and to grow in spirit. These are cornerstones. These are helping things. These are things we need, especially when the way is not clear. As much as when we're filled with joy, and I want to share with you just very briefly that one of the ways in which I have been comforted these last four months has been on the couple of occasions when we've had, Jennifer and I have had baby Eleanor young baby Eleanor with us for a few days at a time. What a delight, right? What a delight. We remember, many of us remember 
when our own children were little or possibly with the blessing of grandchildren, how, how universal the truths are around how they explore relentlessly, right? And, and are learning relentlessly and on a path of discovery, trying new things, unbounded in their energy. And even though each child is different, each grandchild is different, there are, there are a couple of things in which we all share in our memories, in our collective bank of parental and grandparental experiences. And you know them as soon as I say them. 21 months old, Eleanor, forever and always, from the moment she awakes in the morning until she falls asleep at night, wants to play, I spy with my little eye. <laughs> How many thousands of times can a person play that in one day? And yet we do, and it's always, it's always about seeing and integrating and identifying and discovering. It's just, it's fun, but it's learning for her, seeing. Seeing is learning. Hmm. And then secondly, just one word and you're gonna get it. You're gonna be drawn back to your days as a parent or a grandparent or when you've witnessed it in other families. Band-Aids, oh my goodness, how two-year-olds love Band-Aids, right? By the end of the day, she's covered in them, 47 on one day, oh my gosh. Owie, knee, pop up, owie. Again, the same thing, learning, discovery about consequences, but about being cared for about seeing the need to be cared for and feeling so much better when someone loves you and shows a simple way to share that love. Hmm. So it's not much of a stretch then, is it, to return to those final three verses from Matthew's 11th chapter, come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying a heavy burden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Oh my. See and come and receive. <clears throat> it's all about being on a journey with Jesus together. Which is why I think he mentions infants right? That's how we best discover and learn. With open minds and hearts, we want to take the world in and become whole and become better. So let's, let's dive a little deeper into the powerful message that resides here in these three short verses. Number 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. In a word, acknowledgement, right? Jesus knows. Even when we don't, Jesus sees. Jesus feels for us and cares about us when we're tired. He acknowledges that truth, even when we can't see it in ourselves, even when we don't want to believe that it might be true, or even when we can't stop thinking about how tired we are. 
Jesus acknowledges it. And the power of acknowledgement is that it tells us that someone is watching over us and says, I stand with you. And that's enough right there, isn't it? That's enough right there to bring us to our knees with joy and thanksgiving. But it's more than that, isn't it? More than just seeing a need. Such knowing of another person's need, this great gift Jesus gives us, is also an invitation. Come, come, so that we can stand together because I spy with my little eye. I see you. Verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. In a word, partnership. Yes, absolutely, yes. Jesus is Lord. Yes, absolutely, Jesus is Savior. Yes, he is the King of Kings, the Prince of Peace, the Lamb of God, the hope of humankind. Yes. And, and also, he chooses to be our partner. He invites us to be his soul mate. Wow. Pledging, like the bridegroom, to hold us up with gentleness, to have the soft hand of comfort and of instruction and of guidance. Pledging, like a soul mate, to stand beside us with humility, not pointing out what we may have done wrong, not chiding us for maybe what we have left undone, but offering rest, offering restoration, so that our journey together may always, always be Simply moving forward. What a gift. Better than a band-aid. It's a gift that makes life whole. Verse 30. In the seeing, in the acknowledgement, in the partnering, comes assurance for my yoke is easy and my burden is light this soulmate of a savior assures us not that the road will be easy not that it will be without trouble but that his guiding hand will be without trouble and with comfort. That his wisdom will be ever abiding and always sure. His conviction placed upon our hearts will be constant and inspiring. What a gift. What a what a game changer. For a long, long, long time, I've been a gigantic big fan of the artist Chris Rice. His music is so very simple and yet beautiful. Stretching the heartstrings and striking a chord. Lifting up holding close. 
One of his most famous songs is entitled, <laughs> of all things, the untitled hymn, Come to Me. And it's in its own way, at least for me, it's a game changer. It's most definitely a gift. We heard it just before the beginning of this time of reading and hearing God's Word. And I invite you to listen again whenever you want. It's there in cyberspace for you all the time. But before we hear again the lyrics, let's think about this. As much as the cross on which Christ died defines and illumines what it means to see and be seen, defines and illumines what it means to live sacramentally and sacrificially. As much as the empty tomb sings out for all the world to hear the message of hope and good news, for as much as all of those things are the cornerstones of our faith. These words from Matthew, these lyrics from Chris Rice, act as a bright light shining on the truth of how we are called to walk that journey. They sing out that simple and yet beautiful truth that it is a journey we do not walk alone, one we are able to walk because we can now see, we can now feel what it means to be made whole. We can walk whether the days are hard or troubling or filled with great great joy because we are held up and a light is shining so listen now to these simple and yet powerful words about being on a journey weak and wounded sinner lost and left to die. Oh, raise your head for love is passing by. And so come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus and live. Now your burden is lifted and carried far away and precious blood has washed the stain away. So sing to Jesus, sing to Jesus, sing to Jesus and live. And like a newborn baby, don't be afraid to crawl. And remember, when we walk, sometimes we fall. So fall on Jesus. Fall on Jesus, fall on Jesus and live. Sometimes the way is lonely and steep and filled with pain. So if your sky is dark and pours the rain, then cry to Jesus, cry to Jesus, cry to Jesus and live. Oh, and when the love spills over and music fills the night, and when you can't contain the joy inside, then dance for Jesus. Dance for Jesus. Dance for Jesus and live. And with your final heartbeat, kiss 
the world goodbye. Then go in peace and laugh on glory's side and fly to Jesus. Fly to Jesus. Fly to Jesus and live. I think that's what sacramental living is all about. We come to Jesus, even when we feel broken, and we take his yoke, and we feel his gentleness, and we are held up so that we might walk in holiness, we might walk with purpose, we might walk to the glory of God. So come to Jesus. Sing to Jesus, cry to Jesus, fall on Jesus, dance for Jesus, fly to Jesus, and live. May this be our prayer today and always. Amen. To God be the glory, now and forevermore. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Peace be with you.